closing in on the sixth annual Attitude Awards. Today, the finalists. Some talk about moving mountains. Neil Cudby cycles over them. This year, he hand cycled more than 1,000 kilometres through the Tibetan mountain range to raise money for spinal cord research. The team conquered 10 Himalayan range passes, reaching Mount Everest base camp. This was fantastic. To ride and ride and ride all day, every day. Up hills you'll never get bigger. I'll never go higher. I may never have that opportunity again. I just loved it. Neil broke his neck playing rugby as a 17-year-old. He has tetraplegia. All four limbs are affected. Hand cycling affords him a level of freedom. For me, even the regulation ramps are hard work. And so if you put in a bit of dirt and a few stones, and often uh, not achievable in my wheelchair, to the bike, you, you go over those sorts of things. His family and friends provide support, vital for Neil's extreme adventures. We work together to achieve a goal for me, which is quite selfish, but I think they get a kick out of being part of that team and seeing someone achieve. Go, Yeti! The next adventure is never too far away. Next cycling plans is, is more cycling, but they'll be bigger, further, and faster. Mackenzie Kench is always determined to push those boundaries. But Mackenzie's choice of sport tested even her determination. My motivation comes from wanting to be a normal young adult who can be independent as possible. Born with cerebral palsy, Mackenzie's greatest strength is in her mind and her right foot. After just one year, Mackenzie's a confident solo sailor. Going sailing gives me a sense of freedom because it is the only water sport I can do by myself. Sailing wise, the biggest challenge for me is working out which way the wind is coming from. Disability wise, the biggest challenge for me is trying to communicate with people on the support boat. I think the exceptional thing about Mackenzie is her attitude to sailing and uh, just getting on with life. Mackenzie applies that attitude to her university studies. The 20-year-old is studying journalism at Massey University. This year, she'll do her internship with Attitude Pictures. I want a job because I see working as a way to show people that I can be a functional and contributing member of society. Mackenzie's next big goal? To represent New Zealand in sailing at the Rio 2016 Paralympics. In 2008, Phil Thorne contracted bacterial meningitis. He became deaf, blind and paralysed. Phil initially refused to accept his disability till a friend highlighted the amazing life still to be had. Cycling helped me getting through some dark times. Getting out in the fresh air and going hard has helped me to get some clarity in my head. Phil puts every bit of energy he can muster into training. The exhilaration of the speed on the bike and the energy that it gives me. The greatest thing about it is I love letting fresh seeds from new dreams drop into my soul. He's set to compete in this year's gruelling Lake Taupo Cycle Challenge. Most able-bodied people wouldn't do this. I mean, he motivates you the heart to get out and do it. This challenge for me is as much mental as it is physical. I wish to use this challenge to inspire others to never let anything in life limit them in any way. Maya's naturally shy, yet she chose a sport that requires her to be fearless. Becoming the only female player for the Wheel Blacks has taken a lot of courage. I enjoy being like one of the boys. Wheelchair rugby is one thing I feel I'm a little bit good at. Maya Amai was in a car fire as a toddler. Years later, a spinal infection left her paralysed. The tragedy destroyed her confidence. Her caregiver, Letitia, recognised that sport could help draw Maya out of her shell. Heaps has changed since I started playing rugby. Go. I try to 
train moving harder. I trust the boys. And I don't need my ching chong bro holding my hand all the time anymore. Maya calls her most loyal supporter her ching chong bro. I just think she's amazing. Everything that she does, every child that she overcomes, she's amazing. Believing in herself, that's Maya's most important achievement yet. Margaret Olden knows how to network. She uses her connections to drive fundraising for the disabled community. My motivation is always to give back. Margaret lives with cerebral palsy, short-sightedness and severe arthritis in her hands. She devotes her life to her own charitable trust. Will makes sense. All the money she raises goes to projects for the disabled community. We've raised about $2,000 and we're going to get a standing frame that will be placed in a rehabilitation centre. Margaret's well known in her Auckland community. Drawn to her positivity, people readily donate. Because I've got a lot more to prove that I can achieve and that I can do what I'm set out to do. Elizabeth Charleston was once a competitive horse rider and international model. Multiple riding accidents culminated in one severe head injury. She founded Think, the head injury network for Kiwis, to raise awareness. I've been brought to my knees in life and I just don't want other people going through this. So instead of my experience with head injury being a complete waste of time and knowing that I'm preventing some head injuries out there. The network was so successful that the New Zealand Head Injury Society joined forces. Elizabeth passes her skills on to younger riders. Her first instructions are about safety. It's really heartwarming to get these private messages on Facebook to say thank you for saving our child's life. Vanessa McGoldrick knew she had the power to change lives. She just needed to get that law degree first. I think I recognised fairly early on that lawyers had this ability to go and advocate for other people, to go out and fight for their corner, and that really appealed to me. Vanessa had to overcome her own challenges first and fight bureaucracy to be admitted to the bar. I do. Today, she fights for the rights of people with disabilities. For them, it's a bit of a relief not having to tell their story right from the beginning because I've lived the life, I've walked the walk, the same that they have. Vanessa was born without kneecaps and quadricep muscles, a genetic disorder called Nail Patella Syndrome. I think that I am a better person and I've achieved more in my life and done more things because of my disability. It's given me a passion to try all of the things that people tell me that I can't do. She has high levels of fatigue, but the solo mum is still active with her two girls. I have huge dreams. I have huge ambitions to get out there and do things that other people mightn't think are attainable. So the sky's the limit. I set the bar as to what is possible in my life. Lauren Corbett using her strong voice to support students with disabilities at Waikato University. I'm fighting for the students with disabilities to have equal access, whether it be access that they feel comfortable with coming in or whether it's that they can physically access our building. She's Director of Sport and Recreation for the Student Union and in demand as a public speaker. Being smaller and having that extra bit of attention on my life is definitely an advantage because I can use it to show just because I have a disability, it doesn't limit me at all. Being the focus of attention comes naturally to 21-year-old Lauren. She uses her talents to teach disabled children at Star Jam. The main thing I'm teaching them is how to be confident and how to take on the challenges that life throws at them. Jordan Melroy has a message for the world and he's literally shouting it from the rooftops of the globe's tallest towers. It's a personal goal that proving to people that even though you're disabled, 
you can set yourself huge goals in life and conquer them. Jordan has cerebral palsy and needs a walker or wheelchair to get around. Yet last year, he climbed Auckland Sky Tower, all 1,029 steps, reaching the top in just over one hour. With my Sky Tower, I raised enough money to buy 15 rugged wheelchair for Samo. Jordan's popular. He has nearly 5,000 fans worldwide so far. Cerebral was the best thing that ever happened to me because it opened a lot of different doors. Jordan's ultimate goal is to climb the world's tallest tower, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. 22-year-old Olivia Shivas is focused on making a name for herself in print. I want to be a journalist. The goal in the end is just to see more people with disabilities in the mainstream media and proving people that they can be, you know, just as professional and do their job just as well as any other person. Olivia was born with muscular dystrophy. The AUT student encounters issues around accessibility every day. This year, Olivia had her first taste of working in the media as an intern for Attitude Pictures. My name is Olivia and I'm a part of Star Jam. Olivia spent eight years teaching performing arts as a leader for Star Jam. As I've grown up, I've kind of learnt that I'm the one that can be helping other people. I've got special skills that other people won't have, and I think I really want to use them. Mary Fisher exploded onto the world swimming scene at the 2012 London Paralympics. She took everyone by surprise, winning a gold medal, two silver, a bronze, and breaking a world record. It was her first Paralympics. When you're representing your country on the world stage with 17,000 people going nuts in the stands, it's just kind of the most amazing thing I've ever done. Mary gradually lost her sight as a child. She adapted using her other senses. The 20-year-old is now studying speech language therapy at Massey University. Ultimately, I'd love to work, you know, with people. And I've had so many different organisations and people around me growing up, so I'd love to do that for other people and be it in, in speech and language, which I have to use a lot. Earlier this year, Mary's Paralympic success was acknowledged. She was made a member of the New Zealand Order of Merit. There's a lot of things that, that keep me going. It's all my friends and family that support me. And representing New Zealand, you're away with a group of people who've put their lives on hold, dedicated everything that they can to racing at an elite level, and that's something really special. Cameron Leslie strives for constant improvement. At the 2012 London Paralympic Games, Cameron claimed gold in the 150 metre medley and smashed his own world record. To win my gold medal in London was extremely satisfying. You know, you've worked so hard for it and you've, you've, you've given up so much that it's just so good to actually finally achieve what you set out to do four years earlier. Born without fully formed limbs, Cameron admits his success comes from a determination to prove his capabilities. I think my successes in the sporting world have helped me get a bit more confidence about myself. Part of that comes with just being thrust into the limelight and people recognise you on the street. I think it's a good thing to you know, have a bit of extra confidence and that sort of thing because you need it sometimes when you've got a disability. This year, Cameron became the sports reporter for the Northern Advocate in Whangarei. I think my work with the Northern Advocate is important to me because it shows that you're more than just a sports person. Yes, I'm doing sports reporting, but I've gone off, got a degree and got a career from it now. One way or the other, there'll be more headlines on the horizon for Cameron Leslie. At the London Paralympics, cyclist Philippa Gray took the trifecta, gold, silver and bronze. To be an elite athlete, it takes a lot of dedication. My life revolves around my training and cycling and if it was easy, everybody would do it. But because it's hard and we keep pushing through during the hard times, I think that's what makes the difference between an elite athlete and a, a normal athlete. 24-year-old Philippa has just 3% vision and severe hearing loss. Co-pilot Laura Fairweather access Philippa's eyes. 
Having a position of impairment, it sort of motivates me to see and do things now while I'm younger, just in case I do lose it. However, having a disability doesn't make me want to chase success more than anybody else. I want to chase success because I want to do it myself. Their partnership delivered a new world record in the 3,000 metres pursuit. Roll on, Rio 2016. Swimmer and multiple medalist, that's Sophie Pascoe, an undisputed star of the 2012 Paralympics. Thank you, Mark. Sophie well, slashed well, her well. times and boosted her medal haul. Three gold, three silver, and two world records. Yeah, I had very high expectations, but I conquered all of them. I did exactly what I wanted to do, and it's a pretty amazing feeling knowing that you're not only doing the goal for yourself, but you're achieving the goal for the rest of New Zealand. Sophie had her leg amputated when she was just two, the result of a lawnmower accident. She began swimming at seven. She's now a household name. I swim at elite level because that's the ultimate goal. For me, I'm just fortunate that it's turned into a job as well, and I just do what I love. This year, Sophie was honoured as the Halberg Disabled Sports Person of the Year. I've got so much to fulfil throughout the years, and I can do that by putting it in the pool. Phil Springs, an artist and a problem solver. He's used trial, error and determination to perfect techniques that bring his ideas onto canvas. I love to challenge my mind as much as my body. And when you're creating something, it, it gives you a real buzz. A rugby accident at the age of 19 left Phil tetraplegic. Painting was a way to express himself. Art is an expression of a person and the way that they see things. It doesn't matter what disability you have, anybody could be an artist. With minimal feeling left in his hands, paintings can take months to complete. When I first started painting, I painted pictures for pleasure, but now I use my art to tell stories. Don't ever call Alicia McLennan wheelchair bound. Her body is her artistic tool. Being on the bike is the most amazing feeling because it gives me such a freedom of movement. Born with cerebral palsy, Alicia is continuously testing her body in every training session. Alicia performs with contemporary dance company Touch Compass. He's also excelled by going overseas and training over there. That's what makes a great dancer, is knowing where the deficits are and then going and getting extra training for them, and she's done that. Always a high achiever, it's determination that has audiences mesmerised. Her personal highlight was performing as the principal dancer in last year's show, Spring. I think with every new work you come across a new set of challenges, that always expand and develop uh, your way of moving and your way of thinking. Alicia McLennan's multi-talented skills hinted a spectacular future. Tiffany Khalid's paintings are in a striking neo-pop style. Oh, it's overwhelming. <laughs> it's a song new to me. <laughs> Finding ways of becoming famous. <laughs> Tiffany has a learning disability. From a young age, painting was her thing. The staff at Sands have drawn out her artistic ability over the past two years. Tiffany's art's special because of the bright colours. It's a very strong work. She keeps it very simple, and curators and galleries are actually asking for her work now. The 24-year-old does extensive online research, then transfers her ideas onto canvas. Tiffany is her own biggest critic. I ask myself if I think it's a strong painting and if you can read the painting like you read a book. She's about to have her first solo exhibition of neo-pop art. And with fresh confidence up her sleeve, Tiffany's believing her own press. I think I've become a better artist and I'm quite proud of myself. 
here at CCS Canterbury, a lived experience of disability is a real plus on your CV. A solid strategic plan means 60% of staff live with a disability. We need the best people to be doing this work and sometimes the best people are people who have a disability. When Tara Loy applied for a job, managers recognised her abilities first and foremost. CCS has been very supportive of my visual disability. That has helped me get to where I need to be so I can, I can work and feel confident and actually be a, a valued member of the company. CCS policy ensures people feel okay to ask for help in the workplace. And they provide transport to and from work for anyone who needs it. A lot of that is about openness around what people need, what's working, what's not working. Let's just let's find a way to make it work because it's a mutual thing. I learn and I get value from working with everyone in this workplace. I think other employees need to think about employing um, people with different that's it from Matt. He's got to get back on the job. <laughs> Fairfax Media has recently recognised the valuable contributions of disabled workers. Now it's going almost door to door, actively encouraging other companies to follow suit. Project manager Anna Marie Jameson started by creating two positions. Emma and Chloe both have intellectual disabilities and love their jobs. There are so many people that are touched with a disability. Why not represent that community in our workforce? Chloe and Emma are admin assistants. The roles have been adjusted to suit their skills. But those skills keep growing, along with their confidence and sense of independence. I love it. You know, the people are really nice. The company's nice. My boss is amazing. It's to, it's to my life, my life around, remember, because I thought I'd never get a job here. Excited by the impact of their own employment strategy, Fairfax developed a campaign called Creative Spirit. My message to other employers is absolutely give it a go. Why not step up and make a difference? When Justin took over the family transport business, he wanted to make sure it maintained that family focus. The staff that work here, from my perspective, I consider them as, as friends as well as colleagues. Penny Fletcher had been working for Justin for just nine months when she contracted meningitis. It resulted in the amputation of both her legs and the fingers on one hand. Justin always reassured me that depending on the outcome, there would always be something here for me. And I think it was clear that, you know, Penny being able to have that focus of returning to work was a big part of her, her rehabilitation. Funding was taking too long, so UserBus paid for their own building modifications. Because at that time, Penny was using a wheelchair. They lifted my desk up with four by twos because I couldn't fit under there in my wheelchair. We knocked out a wall to go to the toilet because the wheelchair couldn't yeah, fit in. <laughs> when they'd finished, they went to her house and sorted that out too. From an employee point of view, I think you get a lot of loyalty from that. And certainly it shows in their work and how they value their jobs as well. Thirty years. That's roughly how long 82-year-old Glynis Collins has spent poolside supporting Special Olympics. Tap, go! She's a volunteer for Special Olympics Whangarei. I just love doing it. Get it, it's been the TV. Go on. Glynis has five adult children. Her son Darcy has Down syndrome. <laughs> Glynis insists Darcy has got as much out of Special Olympics as she's given back to the organisation. I'm challenged as well because I know that they're relying on somebody to you know, bring the best out of them. Glynis is one of those tireless volunteers. She's a taxi driver, uniform manager, and administrator. When do you wake up in the morning and think, oh well, another day, I'm here again, you know. No, I never get tired of it. I just love people. 
Gary Endicott's life and work is about maximising opportunities. Born with cerebral palsy, Gary was told he would never walk. Yet he's climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, completed the New York Marathon, played rugby league, and he's former New Zealand and world disabled tennis champion. The best way to change society's attitudes is do things that people don't think we're capable of doing. You know, I always thought to die on a mountain, you had to stop, and I don't stop. Gary's the disability facilitator for the Ministry of Education. He says his experience of disability was the best qualification for his job. It's one of the few jobs I'm going to go to where I'm going to be at an advantage. And even if some flash academic Harry goes to university for six years, they're not going to know what, what I know. Gary's approach to teaching is to prepare students for the real world. When I'm working with students, I always try and get them to keep it realistic to their individual situation and we need to get people ready for life, how it's going to be, not how it should be or how we'd like it to be. <laughs> After work, Gary mentors young adults with disabilities. His message? Simple, straightforward, just like Gary. You've got to have aspirations and expectations, and a disability is a factor, it's not going to define me or my life. Robin Hunt should take a deep, proud bow. She's paved the way for the inclusion of people with disabilities. For eight years, she was New Zealand's Human Rights Commissioner. She was a driving force demanding people with disabilities be included as part of the Human Rights Act. And in my life, I've watched disabled people, and particularly people with intellectual disabilities, being seen as not able to speak for themselves. And yet, I've seen people with intellectual disabilities perform in all kinds of situations as well as anyone else. She started out as a feisty journalist. Prejudice she experienced as a vision-impaired female reporter made her determined to stand up for herself and others. I have faced discrimination on ridiculous grounds. I developed a social conscience early on, and I guess I've just always had a recognition of social justice issues. Robin began a quest to change society, setting up the New Zealand Disabled Persons Association. Her smart ideas led to a role as an analyst for the Royal Commission on Social Policy. She gets her messages out wherever she can, rallying people to blow the whistle on those who abuse others. Now, I'm really after justice for other people, disabled women in particular, both here and internationally, we've still got a long way to go.